there's five different types of diabetes. There's type 1 diabetes, type 1.5 diabetes, pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and then gestational diabetes. Mm. Okay, so those are the sort of like five classical forms of diabetes. And now over the past couple of years, they're calling, there's a new form of diabetes called type 3 diabetes, which is actually Alzheimer's disease. Wow. And so no. they're referring to, there's a, there's a lot of research that's now showing that Alzheimer's disease is basically insulin resistance of your brain. And as that research matures, we might actually call Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes down the road. So point being is without talking about Alzheimer's disease for the time being, uh, just like you said, Robbie and I have been living with type 1 diabetes uh, for a combined total of more than 30, I think it's been 31 years total between the two of us now. And what type 1 and type 1.5 diabetes are, is they are autoimmune conditions. So effectively, your own immune system has launched, has mistakenly targeted the cells in your pancreas that manufacture insulin. They're called beta cells. And so your immune system attacks the beta cells and it kills the population of beta cells, and it brings them down to such a small number that the amount of insulin that they're producing is no longer sufficient. And so as a result of that, you go into an insulin deficient state, and then uh, it makes us reliant on having to inject insulin um, from the outside world in order to eat, in order to live, in order to uh, you know, continue to uh, you know, breathe and live a, a normal functioning life. Uh, so that's the, uh, those are the autoimmune versions. Now the difference between type one and 1.5 is that type one usually happens when you're under the age of 30 and it's a relatively strong reaction and you end up going to full insulin dependence relatively quickly within the span of six months, 12 months, sometimes as much as 18 months at the most. Type 1.5 diabetes is an autoimmune version that affects adults that are over the age of 30 and it's a weaker, slower progressing autoimmune reaction. So there's this whole new, uh, there's, there's a whole large collection of adults that are now developing autoimmune diabetes at the age of 35, 40, 60, 65, 70 years old. Wow. And it's actually not type 2 diabetes, this is autoimmune version. And the prevalence of type 1.5 diabetes is now going up and up and Do up. Do type 2 diabetes adult onset, but now they just call it type two, because it sounds like type one is sometimes an adult onset diabetes also. That's exactly right. You hit it on the head. So not only is like type 1.5 now becoming more adult onset, but you also have type two diabetes, which is becoming more child onset at the same time. And so the two of them, you know, they used to be kind of separated in time, but now they're sort of like this Venn diagram is like a, and, and there's an overlap between the two of them. So that brings us to prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So prediabetes and type 2 diabetes are considered lifestyle versions of diabetes. And effectively what happens is that uh, you consume a diet that is too high in fat. And over the course of time, as your diet is high in fat, what ends up happening is that you end up depositing fat in tissue, in, in adipose tissue, which is your fat tissue, which is stored all over your body, right? You got adipose tissue in your butt. You got it in your abdomen, you got it in your neck, it's in your face, it's everywhere, right? And uh, at the same time, not only is fat stored in your adipose tissue where it actually belongs, but fat is also deposited in, into your muscle tissue. It's put inside of your deltoids, it's put inside of your chest, it's put in your quadriceps. Uh, and it also goes into your liver. Is this normal for everyone to have fat in their muscles, and, or is this just if you're overweight? that you have it in your so, muscles and your liver? It's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, your muscles are actually designed, your muscle and liver are actually designed to store small amounts of fat. And they store it, uh, they store it as, a, as a molecule called triglyceride. And so uh, small amounts of triglyceride are not only physiologically normal, but they're actually required for normal opt optimal functioning. The problem is that the standard American diet, the ketogenic diet, the low carbohydrate diet, these are all sort of higher in, in fat than what is considered physiologically normal. And as a result of that, over the course of time, that small amount of triglyceride, which is supposed to be only a tiny, you know, a small amount of energy inside of every cell, it starts to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow over the course of time. So now as that lipid droplet gets larger and larger inside of, of tissues in your, I'm sorry, inside of your muscle and inside of your liver, then those two tissues mount a self-defense mechanism. And the self-defense mechanism is called insulin resistance. And so effectively what these two tissues are doing is they're basically saying, hold on, stop the show. There's so much fat that's coming inside of me that I actually cannot block from coming in because there's very weak cellular mechanisms for these tissues to block this fat from coming in. 
So, you know, every time you eat eggs and fish and bacon and avocados and, uh, and olive oil, there's more and more and more fat coming into your mouth and then therefore more and more fat getting deposited inside of your muscle, inside of your liver. So your, these two tissues can't necessarily block more fat from coming in, but what they can do is they can block glucose from coming in. And so they're basically saying, hey, I'm done. I'm, I don't want any more energy inside of me. So what they do in order to block glucose is they block insulin because insulin is required in order to get glucose inside of the tissues. So they mount this condition called insulin resistance mm -hmm. where they basically are like, all right, insulin receptors, stop. And they, they pull them back in and they, these insulin receptors become less functional. They become less numerous. And as a result of that, the next time you try and eat a banana, or a bowl of quinoa, or a plate of rice, something that has carbohydrate energy in it. If that carbohydrate is broken down into glucose, the glucose and the insulin circulate through your blood, insulin knocks on the door and says, hey, I got some glucose, do you want to take it up? And these tissues are like, no, 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 no. I got all this fat, I got to get rid of all this triglyceride first. And so it's basically the, what the muscle and liver are doing is trying to prioritize the usage of that fatty acid before it gets bigger and bigger. So this is the, the problem with, you know, this is what type 2 diabetes is. So this is what pre Can I just is. recap as a layperson? So you're telling Please. me that type 1 and type 1.5 have to do with the pancreas not being able to produce insulin, but type 2 has to do with the muscles and liver not being able to accept insulin. And so therefore mm. all the sugar <laughs> ends up in your body and then your blood sugar goes up. The one thing, Dotsie, was there something that surprised you? Because what he said mm -hmm. was when I asked him, when, when he talked about, what insulin, what um, diabetes is uh, 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 a result of is too much fat. I had always thought it was too much sugar in the diet. I, full disclosure, I eat a lot of sugar. She's a sugar and addict. I even, yes, I am. And it's, it's quite serious, actually. And my friend who's a doctor once said to me very seriously, and it scared me. She said, if you continue eating so much sugar, you are going to get diabetes. And I'm hearing from you because I don't eat a lot of fat, that that might not be the case. Okay. So you bring up a phenomenal point and you bring up probably the, the number one question in all of the diabetes world, mm -hmm. which is, I thought diabetes had everything to do with sugar. And now you're telling me it has something to do with fat. This doesn't make any sense, right? Okay. So let's be very transparent about this whole thing. When we're talking about sugar, okay, there's effectively two types of sugar, okay? There's refined sugar that comes from packaged and processed products. You know, you see it as table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, mannitol, sorbitol, dextrose, you name it. Okay. Then there's natural sugar or what we like to call carbohydrate. Okay. So when you eat an apple or a mango or a banana, okay, these, these foods, these whole foods actually have long chain and short chain carbohydrates. And these carbohydrates are broken down into what we call sugar molecules. So in, in reality, the thing that confuses people is that we're using the same word, sugar, to describe two completely separate things, and it becomes very confusing. So in reality, what we should refer to is we got refined sugar and carbohydrate from whole foods. Okay? So point being, if you eat a and diet- And would that be that complex carbohydrates? So not simple carbohydrates. That's exactly right. So simple sugars the term, and complex- yeah. So okay. complex basically refers to like the length of the carbohydrate mm -hmm. chain. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating a potato as an example, the length of carbohydrate chains are longer mm -hmm. and therefore they take more time to break down. And if you're eating fruits, you get longer ones, but you also get shorter ones and therefore they, they are more rapidly degraded and more rapidly absorbed. So you're absolutely right. So um, effectively when you're eating a diet that's high in refined sugar, okay, refined sugar causes insulin resistance as well. Okay? Refined sugar ends up um, overwhelming your liver with too much simple sugars. And as a result of that, your liver basically takes it in and it goes, oh my God, what is this stuff? This stuff came in really quickly. It took very little time for it to get inside of the blood. And there's so much of it that now I, have, I, I, can, I can only do one thing and it converts it into fatty acids and then throws those fatty acids back into your blood. And now you have a lot of fat inside of your blood as well. So what I'm trying to say here is that diets that are high in refined sugar can also contribute to insulin resistance and diabetes. There's no question about it. Hey folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free. If you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. 
Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long, does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.